Is there a difference between initial and final salvation? Hi, I'm Ken Yates from Grace Evangelical Society, and I'd like to talk about that for just a few minutes. And before I get started, I I have to tell you that uh, I'm a little angry about it. Uh, this is a topic that once again came to my attention this week because I got an email from an old friend. Uh, I won't tell you how old, uh, uh, but she was a member of my congregation in an army chapel in a long distance past. And she's attending a church and she's involved in this ministry in that church. And the pastor started teaching about final salvation. And if you're not familiar with it, basically what it says is that, yes, yes, we have an initial salvation, like here and now, where it is all by grace and all by faith alone, grace alone through faith. But, they always got to add that but, right? Uh, but the real issue is final salvation. And final salvation is when we stand before the Lord and he looks at our works to see if we're going to get into the kingdom of God. Um, and so they can go, oh, yeah, you're saved by grace, but you're also saved by works. And for someone like me from Kentucky, that doesn't make any kind of sense whatsoever. Uh, you have to have a Ph.D. in Greek to come up with something like that. And I hope that everyone who hears this understands that it's nonsense. It's an example of having your cake and eat it too. They look at a verse and they'll say, well, salvation is by grace, but I believe this verse talks about uh, by works. And so, uh, yeah, it starts off by grace, but it ends by works. Well, no, if it ends by works then it's not by grace, it's by works. And that kind of theology not only is uh, the stuff of philosophy, the stuff that the, the common person in the pew can never understand, they hear it and they go, what in the world are you talking about? If, if they just step back for a second and listen to it, or they'll say, well, that guy, he's got 23 degrees, so he obviously knows what he's talking about, but he doesn't. The scripture doesn't make that distinction. We have eternal life the minute we believe in Jesus alone for it. It's not something that we get finally. It's not something that we get after we die and we stand before the Lord. You know, this, this teaching uh, keeps us in suspense, right? I believe in Jesus but I'm not going to find out until I stand before him if my works measure up, if my works prove that I'm good enough to get in the kingdom. And of course, there's no way I can know whether my works measure up or not, at least not in this life. So I'm going to have to wait until I see him. What a horrible existence and what a horrible theology. And I told you I was angry when I heard it because my friend was exposed to this and she had some questions about it. It should make everyone angry. It's a distortion of the grace of God. It's a distortion of the gospel of grace that says, oh yeah, you're saved by grace, but it's by works. And that's crazy. It's destructive. Because what it does is it robs someone or it attempts to rob someone like my friend that when I, when we've talked, we say we know we have eternal life. Christ promises us and we know we have it because we believe in him for it. And then someone comes along and says, yeah, but you got to wait until you die. And when you see him and he'll measure your works or he'll look at your works underneath a magnifying glass. How can anyone have assurance of eternal life with some kind of teach with a teaching like that? In fact, I'll take it a step further. I think people who teach that a lot of times, the motive is 
Well, I have it. I, th- I, I feel pretty good that when the Lord looks at my works, he's going to be pleased. Now, I don't know that for sure, but I got a lot better chance than you got. And it promotes not only a lack of assurance, but in a strange mixture of, of craziness, it, it also promotes arrogance. Uh, that, you know, since my final salvation depends upon my works, I'm going to look at my works and I'm going to compare myself to other people and I'm going to feel superior to them uh, spiritually. This is a horrible, horrible teaching. Um, instead, I'd share with you a verse like John 5, 24, where Jesus said, he who believes in me has eternal life right now. <laughs> you don't got to wait till you get there and will not be condemned. I already have it. I have it based upon his promise but has already passed from death into life. When I believe in Jesus Christ, I pass from death into life. I will not be condemned at the great white throne judgment. And I already have the life that I'm going to have forever. It was given to me by his grace. It was given to me because he promised me it. Not because I'm going to stand before him one day And he's going to do whatever he's got to do to figure out if I merit what he's already given me. Final salvation. No, I already have it. I have eternal life. The only thing I'm waiting for and the only thing everyone who has believed in Jesus Christ alone for eternal life and they know they had it. The only thing we're waiting for is the glorified body that we're going to have when either he takes us in the rapture or we die and he resurrects our body. But as far as eternal life, it's already yours. I hope that if you are troubled by this teaching, that you discard it immediately. Look at John 3.16. Look at John 5.24. Look at John 11.25 and 26. And realize that this teaching is just an attempt to bring in works and doubt into the offer of eternal life that Christ gives us. And something like this should make us all angry. If you like this video, I'd ask that you press the like button and the subscribe button. And remember, (laughs) keep grace in focus.